welcome back! Today I'm gonna show you how to use simple techniques in Photoshop and how I transform this image taken in Utah to that image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right, as usual, into Photoshop. Now, of course, remember, if you do like the video, do not forget to hit that thumbs up button and also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome, let's get going with that and let's draw in what we're gonna do today. First, let's maybe make that brush a bit smaller, not too small, to something like that. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna increase the brightness in the rocks a little bit and that's not just the brightness, but also the color, right? So both of them have to go up like crazy. Similarly, the same counts for the mountain, which is in the back area here, so all this area has to be nice, bright and visible, all right? We have a person down here which we really don't need, so th this person just has to go away. And the sky is actually quite incredible once you reduce the brightness a little bit. So we're gonna get the brightness down in the sky and we're gonna make sure that there's a nice blur centering from here and then going out towards the edges of the image and it's just gonna look super, super cool as if the clouds would be moving, it's gonna look awesome. And maybe we even work a little bit on the color of these bushes just to make them pop a little bit more. But we can see how we get on during the process. Cool, looks nice, let's get going. Now let's do the most simple thing first and get rid of that particular person in the lower foreground right here. Now there are different ways of getting rid of things in Photoshop. I'm gonna start out by copying my background layer onto a new layer. So I'm gonna hit Command and J and create a copy in the lower right hand corner. Once I have that, I'm gonna hit J on the keyboard to get my spot healing brush tool and I'm just gonna see what happens if I go about over the person as well as over that bush, which I really don't need on my image. That's actually quite stunning. I'm super happy I leave it exactly there. Cool, so a person gone, we got another rock. Well, the rock might be a little bit too similar to the other rock, so let's just remove rock number two. I said we remove rock number two. Rock, you may disappear now every second. No, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna, okay, there we go. That's way better. Cool, nice. Well, he's bringing the rock back. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't you? Okay, that's better. Cool, not the, the person is gone, the suspicious rock is gone as well. And now we can work on the stones we have in the foreground. Now, the image is awesome because it's really, really sharp. So it's really good quality, like I, I did something right when I was there. And uh, let's just bring it out a bit more. First of all, let's start out by increasing the brightness in that rock just a little bit. And we can simply do this by creating a curve adjustment layer and just increasing the brightness to maybe something like, why not something like this? I'm gonna hit Command and I on the keyboard to invert that, get a nice and large brush and with 30% opacity and a white brush, by the way. And with the brush and 30% opacity, I'm just gonna bring that brightness out in the rock just a little bit. It's gonna be barely noticeable, but it's gonna be enough that we will notice once we compare the before and the after. Also, very roughly, I'll just bring that brightness increase in through the mountain in the back there. Not through the mountain, but in the mountain. Okay, something like that. Let's see if we can notice that. Yeah, barely noticeable, but enough to give it just a bit more swing. Now, the next thing I have realized is there's a lot of different colors in that tree. And when I say there is, then I mean there are a lot of different colors in that what tree? What am I talking about? I'm talking about the rock and there are a lot of different colors. There are at least like 15 different versions of orange in here, but they are not really visible. It's more like a brown sort of smudge. And I would like to have some contrast in these colors just to see them a bit, bit better. And we can do this in different ways. I'm a very lazy man, so I'm gonna use the Nick collection. You can do whatever you feel like, of course. I'm gonna hit Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E on my keyboard to create a stamp visible and therefore copy everything that I can see onto a different layer. Once I have done that, I'm gonna to go to the top to filter and then down to the Nick Collection and the Color Effects Pro. And once this has loaded up, I'm gonna bring you back. And we're back and the Nick Collection has finished thinking about it. Awesome, now let's take a look at what happens. So you see, when I go back and forth between what it was and what it will be, the rock just gets so much more definition on the left-hand side, and that is really incredible and I love it. And also the sky is actually getting a little bit, which is not bad at all. Let's take that and I'm actually gonna be happy with all the sort of, you know, settings and adjustments you can do. So I'm just gonna hit, all right. And once it has applied my filter, I'm back with you. 
And we're back and the filter has been applied to our layer. Now the problem is that this filter is a little bit too strong when it comes to the vegetation which we can see here in between these two rocks or mountain areas or whatever you want to call them. So I want to make sure I only apply that filter to areas I like it in. So for instance our foreground rock and our background rock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask by hitting in the layer mask symbol in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to hit command and I to invert that and now I can bring back the effect wherever I feel like if I use a white brush. And that is what I shall do with maybe, let's put it up to 40% opacity. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that effect into the, the rock we have here in the foreground. I'm going to take my time and it's going to look awesome. Maybe something like that is not bad. And let's also zoom in a little bit and get that one in the background there. So make the brush a bit smaller and just go over the rock we have here. Okay, to something like that maybe, that's not bad. Now if we look at the before and after for this part only, it does a massive difference to how the rock looks essentially, and that's really cool. Good, so now we have done that part and I'm quite happy with it so far. I think we can go a little bit higher with the, uh, the saturation in our image. So what we can do is we can create a hue saturation layer which you can find on the right or somewhere at the bottom down here. And I'm just going to increase my saturation to maybe something like, not too much, I don't want to go overkill, or maybe something like that. Nice, yeah, let's keep that. I kind of like this. Cool, and that is literally all we have to do to make the foreground a bit more, well, just look a bit nicer. Let's work a little bit on that sky, because I think the sky is what will catch the eye later, and the mountain is rather something that will complete it. So let's have a look what we can do. So what I like about it is that we have the sort of lines of the clouds, and they come from our center, at least that's what it looks like, and our center is that rock, and they go towards the edges of that image, right? So what we can do, we can apply a blur, which will sort of, you know, put a bit more attention on that kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and do exactly that. For that, we need a way first to select our sky. So I'm going to create once more a star visible by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E. So I have everything that we have done on a separate layer right down here. And I can just go to the top left and select my Quick Selection tool. And with that, I'm literally just going to draw through the sky to something like that and hopefully, yeah, it does a pretty neat selection. If we go in a little bit, it looks good. It has recognized where the sky is and where the, the rock is. I would have been kind of disappointed if it wouldn't have done that. So, well done. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do, I'm going to hit Command and J on my keyboard and this is going to create a copy of that sky only. All right, so if I move that around, you see I have now the sky on a separate layer, which is exactly what I needed to do. Now, with that selected, I'm going to go to Filter, and then down to where the bl blur, here it is, and then down to radial blur. Now here I want to change my method to zoom if it isn't already. I'm going to choose an appropriate amount of, well, 10 apparently, that's what I had chosen before. And I position my center somewhere here, right, so that it still looks like the, the clouds are radiating out from behind that mountain or that rock. Cool, let's hit OK there, let it think for a second, and once it has done that, it'll apply that filter to only those clouds and nothing else, right? And you, as you can see, if I just hide the selection for a second, if I go before and after, it has done exactly that, okay? So it has only blurred sort of that area on top. Now, of course, it has also blurred a little bit ab above our area here, so now the mountain has gotten some of that blur as well, which is not really what we need, okay? Simple fix for that, trust me. What we want to do is we want to make it invisible. So the sort of you know layer we had just created, make it invisible. And we select the one with the mountain again, which was just the step, the step we had before. And with my quick selection tool selected, I'll just make a quick selection on that sky again. Just do something like that. And once I have that, I'm going to create a layer mask with it. So I'm going to hit the little layer mask symbol. Okay, so now I have a little, a little layer mask there, which is kind of awesome. So what I can do now, if I switch the other one back on, I can hold Alt on my keyboard and drag that layer mask onto the other layer. Okay, and by the way, we can also delete that layer mask because we don't really need it. We just need it to create it to apply to the other layer. So what we have done now, we have sort of made sure that the effect is not influencing our rock. Okay, so the rock's totally cool, totally fine, but uh, the effect is now clean around the edges of that rock and any other rock and any other background, all right? So that's awesome and that's exactly what we want. Now we can now play with the sky as much as we feel like because we have it on a separate layer. So for example, if I were to decrease that brightness in that for a little bit, I can hit Command, Alt and G to make sure I clip this adjustment to only the sky. You see there's gonna be a little arrow in the lower right. So let's zoom out and have a look how far we wanna bring that down. Maybe 
Uh, how about something like this? Not to go too nuts, but I think that looks actually quite nice. Awesome. So let me go back. So that's our before sky. And that's, uh, that's not our before sky. That's our before sky. And that's our after sky. And I think these kind of blurs, they look really, really nice. And these kind of images where you just have a nice sky with a lot of stuff in it in terms of clouds. Awesome. So now that we have done that, we are fully free in doing whatever we feel like. In my case, let's just give the, the bushes we have in the foreground a little bit more green. So I'm going to quickly, actually, let's just go into the, our green channel here and increase that saturation, zoom in so that we can actually see what we're doing, maybe to something like that. And is that actually selecting our green? Let's see. If we increase this and this to the very max, everything that goes crazy in the image is what we select. I want to make sure I select my green stuff, which are my bushes, maybe something like that. Then we can bring that down again to a normal kind of way looking. And let's just change that to a nice and soft green, maybe something like that and increase the opacity to something like this. And I want to put that in by hand because in some areas it does weird things. So I'm going to hit Command and I on my keyboard and with a white brush and an opacity of say 40% as usual, I can bring the effect out in just a couple of these bushes. Not too much, just a little bit enough to be noticed, let's say, right? So that the bushes are nice, soft and green. Now let me do this for a moment for you guys as well. Not too many, but I think that's already quite enough. Awesome. And within just a couple of minutes, we have gone from this original image to that image in Photoshop. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Great. Well, again, thanks for watching. I hope you get the chance to go to Utah as well. Beautiful place. Awesome for photography. Don't miss out on that chance if you ever get it. Awesome. Get out there, take some pictures, process them, have fun, and I shall see you the next time. Bye.